Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, some more Raw Thoughts, more fourth in a row, can you believe it? Last Raw before the Royal Rumble, so let's get on with it shall we? So, Vicky Guerrero starts the show and she's vexed about last week in The Rock, taking a piss out of her with the songs, and so they showed the songs that we saw last week, they showed quite a lot of them. it's not just one, little, it's not just like the punchline, it's not you. Know, it's not just like one or two of the lines, they show most of the songs which is, I don't know, it's, it's quite annoying. Vicky says that she's so vexed about all this that Rock is banned from the arena, and lo and behold we see The Rock in the back, but he won't be let in because of some, so there's um, some policemen. They're guarding him. It's all good. Um, they say that if they, you know, he tries to get in the ring, he, they'll arrest him. So um, Rock runs down Punk. He runs down Heyman. Runs down Vicky, and says, so "Only a matter of time until he gets into the ring tonight." And then Cole so tells us tonight we got a beat the clock challenge. Oh, does Vicky? I'm sorry. Um, one of them, Vicky or Cole? I put Cole here. Don't know why that is. Anyway, tonight we've got a beat the clock challenge, and you know what that means. It means. You know, lots of very short matches, which, you know, I feel like, oh, okay, you know, and, you know, the, the shortest time gets the chance to choose what number they have in the Royal Rumble. Happy days. So, the first match of the night is a Beach the Clock Challenge match as Randy Orton defeats Antonio Cesaro. And, you know, just to prove me wrong immediately, the match lasted 11 minutes and 36 seconds. And not only did it last that long, it was actually pretty decent. I enjoyed this one a hell of a lot. Good match. Was it as good as last week? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was at least on par with it, I'd say. Um, Michael Cole tells us that Antonio Cesaro owns lots of Swiss watches. I can sleep soundly tonight, ladies and gentlemen, knowing that fact. That is the truth. Um, yeah, RKO gets the win for Orton. And you, know, you, you you can't help thinking that time will not only be beaten, but it'll be comprehensively beaten later on in the show. We get to see Mick Foley's Hall of Fame vid from SmackDown, very well put together. There's still a in it, so you know, it looks like they're finally lessened, loosening down on that. And then we get a vid also from SmackDown from The Shield, which is as good as all the other ones have been. Next, uh, Big Slow defeated Zack Ryder in 40 seconds. Just quit now while you got the chance, Zack. Just get out of there, please. Brad Maddox came out to do the commentary. That was all good, I suppose. Yeah, there was nothing offensive about that. And then in the back, Heyman is interrupted by Brad Maddox, who has a camera crew with him. Looks like he's filming some sort of reality show, something. I don't know why. Uh, Heyman says, you know, stick with me. Yeah, it looks like he's finally getting to him, I suppose. Um, Ryback defeated Heath Slater in uh, another short match. This one, you know, was what it was really it was just a very very short i think it lasted a minute and a half something like that ryback gets on the mic cuts a promo saying how that the rumble match is perfect for someone like him and that he's going to win the royal rumble perfect oh god no problem with that i suppose yeah, i'd like a longer match i'd like it if, if he must lose it to go five minutes but it's ryback and ryback does short matches so what yeah, it's what it is what it is isn't it in the back vicky wants the rock to apologize um he says he won't, and he's going to the ring on his terms, and he still calls Vicky ugly. There's something about Rock and all this. Yeah, I like it. When, when Rock's being serious, I like it. I don't, there's something about him using the word biatch that just makes me cringe every time he says it. That it's the, it's the, no, no, come on, no. Just, you, you're too old for that word. <laughs> Punk comes out to the ring. Um, Michael Cole says, Ricky Guerrero. Well done, Cole. Um, Punk says he's not here to sing songs. He's not here to tell jokes. He's here to hurt people. It's the basic point of the promo. It was a very intense promo. It was the classic hard sell promo that we all like. That it, it should happen on the shows before the pay-per-view. That TNA seemed to have never, ever grasped this fact, you know. Um, that's all good. Um, Dolph Ziggler then defeated The Miz. And once again, I'm proved well and truly wrong. and proved that I just don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Uh, the match lasted 10 minutes and 56 seconds, so it's a good 40 seconds shorter-ish than the other one. Um, yeah, the, uh, when was the last time we saw two long, good matches on Raw? Was it recently? Was it last year? I don't know when it was, but it, yeah, this is like, wow, would you reckon we're actually going to complete the set and have a third one later on? Um, Jesus Christ, did you see the, the figure four that Miz did in this match? Because my goodness me, it was terrible it was absolutely awful um but yeah other than that that was the only bad thing about this match zigzag gets the win for zol for dol for zolf I, I went to say then didn't i because i'm an idiot dolph dolph got the win with the zigzag 10 minutes 56 seconds to take the lead brian daniel brian and kane had a graduation 
uh, segment with Dr. Shelby. Dr. Shelby chant, brilliant, happy days. Um, you can probably imagine how this was. You know, it was stupid and it didn't go anywhere at all. And of course, it didn't do anything whatsoever to sell the match at the paper. I mean, it's not like the road scores interrupted it or anything. Like, I was fully expecting. I was fully expecting this. Perfect chance to stand out to come out once again and to run his mouth. But no, no, they're just assuming that everyone is already excited enough about the pay-per-view, so they're just going to give him a skit. And it was funny. It was funny. And then I actually legitimately laughed out loud when um, when we got Hugger Mania going as everyone in the arena is hugging. That was fantastic. Can't go wrong with that. Um, Caitlin defeated Alicia Fox in a, in a nothing match where her tits almost fell out at the end. One with a spear, which was, I mean, a piss break on that. Paul Heyman then shows Punk to a skybox, comes out to the ring, and he starts talking very slowly. Says he's going to deliver a pull bomb, not a pipe bomb to Punk. Um, yeah, it's all slow and deliberately so that yeah, everyone can understand him. Eventually, Rock comes out, complete with entrance music, with a ticket. Now, I'm not quite sure how this one works, because surely if you've got a ticket, you should be part of the audience. How do you, if, if I go to a wrestling show and I buy my ticket, if I go to a Future Shock show, yeah, I don't buy my ticket and then automatically, not only can I assume that I can go backstage and go and chill, but also when I actually eventually make my way to the seat, I'm going to get my own ring entrance. Although it would be fun, wouldn't it? But I can't ever see it happening. You know, it's not something I'm going to go and ask for. I think we should do this. It's gonna, yeah, you can imagine the promoter's face was like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, that's what I deserve. Because it's The Rock, I suppose it's all right. And he comes out, and, you know, he, he says that it's tonight. Tonight is Punk's last night on Raw as WWE Champion. He promises he's winning the belt. The thing is, though, and this is, this may, this is Mark P nitpicking, um, but, you, know, you hang, hang with me, you might, you might agree with this one, right? He promises that he's winning the championship, and, yeah, that's all good. But back in the day, well, I'm sure you will remember, we knew that The Rock was going to do something right. If he said... He guaranteed it. He was winning. End of. Go back and look. Every time he said that word or that guaranteed. Well, yeah, it's one word, but it's just because it's so strong now, isn't it? Three syllables. Um, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought because I started saying guaranteed. If he guaranteed it, if he guaranteed it, it happened. All right. He should have said that here. If he's winning the championship, makes me think. Because hmm, I'm you know 99.9999% .9 certain you know that Rock is winning the championship. I'm going to do a predictions bit for the Royal Rumble on Thursday, I reckon. And yeah, I will say exactly that. I'm certain of it. Just the, 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 that that point one percent of doubt comes from the fact he didn't guarantee it, which I was waiting for the whole time. You know. Anyway, yeah, if you smell what the Rock is cooking, and then the lights go out, and when they come back on, the Shield are giving them beats. And what I really liked about this is that the, the Rock got that one moment where he started to fight back. That was brilliant, because then the Shield could really start laying the beat down. And he got the triple power bomb, and then the Punk, the, the, the Punk, the Rock, the Punk, the Punk, the, 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 the Cunt, I don't know, the Punk. Speaking, man, it's hard work. The, the, the Punk, CM Punk, it's just easier to say like that. <laughs> Gets on the mic and, you know, cuts a promo while he's down. And while he's cutting this promo, um, Rock's down on the on the mat and he's he's spitting blood up, which, it, I don't know, it's just, for me, that was a very effective visual, I think. Yeah, I enjoyed that segment a lot. I'm probably the only person who did know Marlo, but I actually genuinely enjoyed that. Ah, I would, because I'm not one of these people who sees the, the silly stuff about Rock. You know, Rock does the silly stuff and the catchphrase and, and gets on the computer and goes, Me, Rock's stupid! I just go, come on, wait. When he does the serious stuff, it's fucking gold. So let him say, King sing along with The Rock. It doesn't matter and all that. Let him do it. I don't care. I remember last year, you know, a year ago, was it? Was it a year ago? I did a vid called De Defending The Rock. And every point that I made in that vid still stands to this day. I'm not going to sit and badmouth him. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Biatch, for example, like I said on this vid. Anyway, Wade Barrett then defeated Sheamus in another... No, sorry, he didn't at all. Wade Barrett versus Sheamus ended in a no contest because they didn't beat the time. It was a good match. I, I'm... I'm personally digging Wade Barrett at the moment. His heel facial hair is quite magnificent. <laughs> yeah, not not bad at all. Basically, when, the, when there's a minute left of the clock, because of course the clock's in the bottom left corner counting down from the time that Dolph Ziggler's got. Um, when, a minute, when there's a minute left, Dolph comes out with AJ Langston, basically prevents Sheamus from winning. He manages to hit a, a bro kick, but the, the, it runs out of time, which is lovely. 
So still, you know, Dolph's a happy chappy and he goes backstage and I get to choose what number I get and he bumps into Vicky and he's all, hey, I get to get to choose and Vicky's like, no, 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 no. You get to choose between numbers one and number two. Ha <laughs> ha, nice little twist. That's brilliant. I, I've no problem with that again. What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with that. I've got no issue with it. It's like, yep, yeah, that'll do. Brilliant. <laughs> In the back, Punk and Heyman run into Vince and they deny having anything to do with the Shield, but Vince says that if the Shield interfere in the match on Sunday... Punk stripped of the championship. Interesting little thing development, no problem with that. Alberto de Rio defeated Tensai, who doesn't get an entrance, which really makes me chuckle, in a minute and a half. <laughs> look how far, look how far Lord Tensai has fallen. He doesn't have his dude with him anymore. He's just another guy. He's a lower mid-card guy who comes out without an entrance and loses to Del Rio in a minute and a half. Well done. Del Rio, to his credit, hit a nice German suplex in this one, one with an Inseguri and a really pretty moonsault, actually. All good. And then, last couple of things. Bob Backlund is the next person to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. No issues with this one whatsoever. It, I, I was surprised, if I'm honest, when I was watching this. Like, ooh, that is an interesting little one. Because Bob Backlund was offered the Hall of Fame years ago and turned it down. Turned it down flat. So, yeah. I mean, maybe he's found peace with WWE. Maybe he's, it says it's time. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. No problem with that one at all. No problem with Mick Foley either, by the way. Not one problem. There are people on here who... I, I, I watched a video the other day. I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, God, what's his name? Reggie or something? The guy with the weird eye. Um, yeah, running... I mean, I'm guessing that was a trolling bit because you wouldn't just wouldn't feel that badly about Mick Foley. But I've, yeah, no problem with that whatsoever. I may have said that last week. I'm sorry to waste your time. So, in the main event interview slot, John Cena comes out and talks about absolutely nothing for five minutes. About you know, Seriously, he, he's just talk, trying to get to the point across is that we, we like Sundays. And he goes around with various members of the audience saying what they're doing on a Sunday before getting serious and talking about the Royal Rumble and how he will run the, win the Royal Rumble. But as soon as he's finished talking, Sheamus comes out and then the primetime players come out and Orton and Miz and Kane, Daniel Bryan, Antonio Cesaro and three man band all come out one at a time say that they're going to win the Royal Rumble. Lovely. So you've got lots of people in the ring, but there's not enough people in the ring because then the entire roster come out and we get a brawl to end the show. Happy days. Is it just me, or is WWE starting on a little bit of a roll at the moment? That was the third enjoyable roll in a row. Three straight that I've enjoyed. It must be the road to WrestleMania. This is why I didn't watch WWE at the tail end of last year at all. After SummerSlam, I just thought, fuck it, I don't want to watch this shit again until Royal Rumble time, because then I know which will be good, because the fucking Vince puts his fucking head on and goes, right, I'm going to make... You know, it's like the writing... So I saw a comment earlier on that said, can we just convince Vince... Can, can we convince McMahon... Because convince Vince is just too weird. Can we convince McMahon that it's just January to March permanently? Because <laughs> if they did, WWE would be great again, wouldn't it? That, that's a simple fact. I enjoyed this show. I'm pumped for Royal Rumble. I'm really looking forward to it. This show did everything it needed to do. You could argue, like I said earlier, that having the Road Scholars interfere or do something with Daniel Bryan and Kane would be good. To, you know, but I suppose the, the build-up to the pay-per-view is done. Both title matches got sufficient time, one more than the other, but that's always going to be the case if The Rock's there. And the you know people are looking forward to the Royal Rumble, so it, you know, it served its purpose. This was a good episode of Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed that. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, leave me a comment below, because I don't get enough of them. I want more comments. I like reading. I may not reply to them all, but I like reading your comments. Legitimately, I read all of them. I guarantee you, I read every single comment that you write. Um, my next vid will be on Thursday evening. I will be um, doing a Royal Rumble predictions vid. I'm also working at two shows this weekend at GPW and at Great Bear. So I might talk about those. And of course, it's Future Shock this weekend as well. Um, if you've got a moment, my friend Mark Adams started a podcast for Future Shock. Um, the link is in the description down there. It's absolutely brilliant. It's got a great interview on it with Day Rain. I have started a podcast with a couple of friends. Um, the link is in the description. We did our first show last week and it went really, really well. Had over 250 listens, which was just magical for a first time show. We've got over 100 followers on Twitter already. We've got ridiculous amounts of likes on Facebook already. All the links are in the description below. It's a British wrestling, right? I know a lot of people don't like me talking about that, but it's solely focusing on British wrestling. We've got an interview with a guy called Chris Brooks, who's a British wrestler who's just made his debut in CZW, for example. Um, and, yeah, we're filming, recording even, another one on Wednesday night. They go live on Wednesday nights. Links are all in the description below. I've been Mark P. Subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought, and I will see you all very soon. Take these, guys.